Well, Ingeborg, could you tell us something about what's the real problem in life? About things like addictions, depression, anger, etc. Yes, well, it's, I think one of the most important things that I would really like uh, many, many people to become aware of, because it can really help them to get out of the problem, is that the real problem is usually just one layer underneath what we think is the problem. So what do we think is the problem? For example, fear, panic attacks, or you know, chronic anxiety, depression, uh, stress, burnout, uh, addictions, anger. You know, there's many, there's many different kinds of problems that we all, or many of us, struggle with. And our tendency is to focus on the problem that we are struggling with. So, if I'm angry with my partner, you know, and I'm, I'm getting into a lot of fights, I'm going to think, well, my anger is the problem. Or I'm very often irritated with my children. So, what's you know, what's irritating me so much? Well, they're not listening to me, for example. Something a lot of parents can recognize. Or addictive behavior, I'm eating too much, or I'm smoking, drinking, etc., etc. So how am I going to quit smoking, drinking, eating? Um, burnout, we already talked about that. I'm so tired, I'm working too much. Uh, depression, you know, my life is lousy, I feel depressed. Uh, fear, I'm afraid to... Um, to do presentations at my job. So how am I going to get the, you know, the strength, the force, the, the self-confidence to do this? So our mind automatically takes us into what we perceive as the problem and then tries to find solutions. Yeah. And what I'm saying now is that actually the true solution, which means the solution that will work in the long run, the solution that will help you to really get over the problem, not just now, get over your irritation, anger, stress, depression, etc. Now, no, but in the long run also, the real solution is just underneath. Mm -hmm. And so what is there? What is this underneath? The metaphor that I, I like to use is that all these problems that we encounter in daily life actually are no more than a lid, a lid on a big septic tank. A tank full of old pain that we have not been able to process correctly. And I mean literally process correctly in the sense emotionally and also this will have its repercussions neurologically because these old events coming from our very early childhood are stored somewhere in what we call the emotional brain. And this emotional brain is like an unconscious part of our brain, which stalks experiences that we have as a child that we could not process because they were too big for us to process as a child. So if you are looking at the level of depression, anxiety, uh, anger, etc., etc., and you try to find a solution in the present for that problem, instead of going down to see what's underneath it, you're not really going to get to the root of the problem. Because how does this work? As children, I've explained in other videos as well and in my book, so you can get a lot more information about that if you like. Um, as children, we all experience things that could be directly very threatening, very painful. We all know of the horrible things that happen very often with children. Unfortunately, many of us have suffered from that. But of course, there are also many people who have not suffered from these well-known, horrible, you know, big things like abuse and, and um, physical aggression and abandonment, but have suffered more subtle things like, for example, being left alone while you were afraid and forced to go into situations that were very scary to you when you, for example, were only two years old. Or something that happens to a lot of us is, as a baby, we're lying in our little bed and crying and our mother is either busy or fed up or too tired or she doesn't hear us and she doesn't come. These are ex examples of situations that for children lead to an overflow of stress hormones in the system. And the child cannot process this experience. So the experience is stalked somewhere in our emotional memory and then as we as we grow up 
it's this this tank full of you know painful experiences of this small child that we were um, is going to be covered closed off by a lid and this lid consists of five different ways to tell ourselves that actually there is not really a problem in the past and actually the problem is in the present and we can maybe do something about it so our our mind sort of helps us to survive as a child but as an adult it will help us to look in the wrong direction it's going to tell us our mind is going to tell us my problem is in the present day situation i need to solve a, 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 a i need to find a solution for a situation in the present whereas actually these problems in the present are only even though they're very painful they are only part of this lid that we construct to cover up these painful old experiences so what we do in PRI is we help clients with depression, with stress, with all the problems that I just talked about. We will help them to see what is hidden behind the depression, behind the stress, etc. Clean up this reservoir and then the lid has no more function. Because if the depression actually, this is hard to understand, but if you... If you um, going to a PRI therapy, you'll find out how the depression is actually helping you to not feel the old pain of the child you were. Once you go in and do feel the old pain of the child you were, and realize that it's over and you've survived it, no matter what it was, then you don't need the lid anymore. So then you see the de depressed feelings, for example, but also the angry feelings, also the... Uh, addictions, also the stress, the fear, all these things serve as this lid. So the lid no longer has a function. And we can take off the lid and really solve the root problem of these things that we all encounter in, in everyday life.